In this tutorial, we will be going over how to create a function to read over I2C. Here is the link to the datasheet I will be referring to throughout the video. Create a PSOC 4 project and title it I2C UART Tutorial. Search the component catalog for the I2C component and place it in the top design. Double click on it and configure it to be in master mode. Go into the workspace explorer and open up the CYDWR file. Assign the SCL pin to P40 and the SDA pin to P41. Click the top left button to build a project so PSOC Creator can auto-generate sources for you. Once the project is built, we will now hook up the PSOC 4 to the accelerometer breakout. Put the breakout on a breadboard and wire together the pins as so. Pin 4-0 to SCL and pin 41 to SDA. Take the 3.3 volt pin and wire it to VDD on the breakout and also take the ground pin to the ground on the breakout. If there are no pull-up resistors in the breakout, put a 1k ohm resistor from SDA to VDD and another from SCL to VDD. Once done, attach the PSOC 4 via mini USB to the computer. Back on PSOC Creator, we will go into Workspace Explorer, right click on header files and click on add new item. Click on header file and title it as i2c.h. Back into Workspace Explorer, right click on source files and click on add new item. This time, click on C file and title it as i2c.c. These newly created files will contain all i2c related functions. Next, we will go into the header file and include project.h, so the files have access to our generated sources from the top design. Then, we will define macros to be used in the project. First is the slave address of the accelerometer. We will title it Excel underscore ADDR. Its value is OX1D, and this information is found on the top of page 19 of the datasheet. The next macro is the register address for the Who Am I register. The value of this register is OX0D, and this is found on page 21 and 30 of the datasheet. Now we'll add a function prototype and title it excel underscore read reg. This function will be a uint8 because it will return the value read from the register. This register's address will be passed in as a uint8 parameter. With the header set up, we will now add the actual read function to the C file. Click on the i2c.c file. Then include the i2c.h file above. In order to read over i2c, you must first write the register address to the slave address, which in this case is the accelerometer. Then you use the master read buff function to store what's contained in the register into the read buffer. Based on these steps, we'll write the read register function. As mentioned before, the register to be read from will be passed in. Create a write buffer that will hold the register's address. Then create a read buffer that will be used to store the value read from the register.
In order to take care of step 1 from above, we will call the I2C master write buff function. The first parameter will be the accelerometer's slave address defined as excel underscore ADDR in the header. The second parameter will be the write buffer that contains the register address. The count will be 1 and the mode will be set to no stop. We will then have a while loop that checks if the master status indicates that the write was complete. Now to take care of step 2, we will call the I2C master read buff function. For the parameters, the first parameter stays as the slave address. The second parameter will be the read buffer. The count stays as 1, but the mode will change to repeat underscore start. We will have another while loop, but this will check if the read was complete, instead of checking if the write was complete. Finally, we will return what was read and stored into the read buffer. Now that the read function is done, it is time to test it. If not open already, open up the main.c file. Once open, include the i2c.h file. Start the I2C component by using the I2C underscore one underscore start function. Then enable global interrupts by uncommenting this line. Create a variable to store the device ID. To test if the read function works, we will read the who am I register. We chose this register specifically because according to the bottom of page 30 in the datasheet, this register will return the pre-programmed device ID of OX4A. Within the for loop, we will call our read register function to read the who am I register and store it into device ID. We will then debug our code to see if OX4A actually returns. Click on the bug looking icon at the top. And keep stepping over until you hit the read register function. Once you step over the read register function, you should see that OX4A returns into device ID. We can now confirm our read function works.